In the previous chapter, we talked about clock time and psychological time. When you make an effort to escape psychological time and focus on the present moment, even if it only lasts for a short clock time, you may lose it again. Repeatedly, you move away from and then back to the present moment. Gradually, being present becomes your main state. In this chapter, author explores how the mind attempts to deceive us into avoiding the present moment. People experience different levels of unconsciousness. During sleep, you go back and forth between dreamless sleep and dreaming. Similarly, when awake, most individuals alternate between ordinary unconsciousness and deep unconsciousness. Ordinary unconsciousness involves being absorbed in your thoughts and emotions, which is the usual state for many. It's not marked by intense pain or sadness, but rather continuous low-level discomfort, dissatisfaction, boredom, or nervousness. This might go unnoticed because it's considered a part of normal life. To cope with this unease, many turn to substances, activities, or behaviors like alcohol, drugs, sex, food, work, television, or shopping, trying unconsciously to alleviate their basic discomfort. The unease of ordinary unconsciousness can escalate into the pain of deep unconsciousness during challenging times or when the ego feels threatened. Major life events, conflicts in relationships, or perceived threats can trigger a heightened and more obvious suffering. In ordinary unconsciousness, resisting or denying reality contributes to the discomfort that people mistakenly accept as normal. When faced with challenges, intensified resistance can lead to intense negativity such as anger, fear, aggression, or depression. Deep unconsciousness occurs when the pain body is activated, and you become entwined with it. Physical violence becomes possible when in a state of deep unconsciousness. It can also manifest in collective negative energy fields generated by crowds or even entire nations. Your level of consciousness is best reflected in how you handle life's challenges. When faced with difficulties, an unconscious person tends to sink even deeper into unconsciousness, while a conscious person becomes more intensely aware. If you struggle to be present in ordinary situations, like sitting alone in a room, walking in nature, or listening to someone, it's unlikely that you'll maintain consciousness when things go wrong or when confronted with difficult people, situations, or the threat of loss. In such moments, the reaction that takes over is usually a form of fear, pulling you into deep unconsciousness. These challenges serve as tests, revealing where you stand in terms of your state of consciousness. It's not about how long you can meditate with your eyes closed or the visions you experience. This isn't a unique problem. Even the renowned psychiatrist Carl Jung observed the pervasive tension in people's faces, their staring eyes, and a cruel demeanor. This constant unease has been present long before Western industrial civilization, existing during the times of Jesus and Buddha and extending even further back in history. To liberate yourself from this affliction, bring it into consciousness. Observe how unease, discontent, and tension arise within you through unnecessary judgment. This awareness will make it easier to confront deep unconsciousness when you feel its pull. Make self-monitoring a habit. Frequently ask yourself, am I at ease at this moment? Or inquire, what's going on inside me right now? But refrain from answering immediately. Turn your attention inward and examine your thoughts. What are you feeling? Explore the sensations in your body. Is there any tension? When you notice a low level of unease, akin to background static, Investigate how you might be avoiding, resisting, or denying life, especially the present moment. Examine if there's resentment in your actions, perhaps toward your job or a task you agreed to but secretly resent. Are there unspoken resentments toward someone close to you? Recognize the potential harm your energy may be causing, contaminating both yourself and those around you. Look within for even the slightest trace of resentment or unwillingness on both the mental and emotional levels. Observe the thoughts your mind generates and the corresponding emotions in your body. Determine whether these emotions are pleasant or unpleasant and if they are energies you'd willingly harbor. Reflect on whether you have a choice in this matter. You might feel taken advantage of, engaged in a tedious activity, or dealing with someone dishonest or irritating. However, whether your thoughts and emotions are justified doesn't matter. The key is that you are resisting what is happening, turning the present moment into an adversary. This creates unhappiness and inner conflict, affecting not only yourself but also those around you and the collective human psyche. Your unhappiness contributes to the pollution of your inner being and the broader human consciousness. 
This inner pollution is reflected in the external pollution of the planet, showcasing the impact of millions of unconscious individuals not taking responsibility for their inner space. You have options. Consider stopping the current activity, talk openly with the person involved about your feelings, or let go of the negativity your mind has generated around the situation, as it serves no purpose. Negativity is never the best way to handle a situation. Unhappiness spreads more easily than a physical disease, unless someone is immune to it, or in other words, if they are highly conscious. To drop negativity, start by recognizing that you no longer want to endure the pain or carry the burden. Decide that you don't need these heavy and useless emotions, such as deep unconsciousness or the pain body, and then simply let them go. When a mind pattern, emotion, or reaction arises, accept it. Understand that, at that moment, you may not have been conscious enough to choose differently. Ask yourself whether you would prefer suffering or joy, unease or ease, conflict or peace. Acceptance of emotions like resentment, moodiness, and anger empowers you. It prevents blind reactions and reduces the likelihood of projecting these feelings onto others. With consistent acceptance practice, these negative emotions diminish, and you strengthen your connection to the present moment and others, fostering a sense that, everything is okay. Recognize other instances of ordinary unconsciousness also, such as complaining about situations, people, surroundings, life, or even the weather. Complaining turns you into a victim, whereas speaking out empowers you. If your current situation makes you unhappy, consider three options, remove yourself from it, change it, or fully accept it. If taking action, like leaving or making changes, drop the negativity first if possible. Taking any action is often better than doing nothing, especially if you've been stuck in an unhappy situation for a long time. Even if the action turns out to be a mistake, you gain a lesson, transforming it from a mistake into valuable learning. Remaining stuck yields no such lesson. If fear is holding you back from taking action, acknowledge it. Watch it, bring your attention to it, and be fully present with it. If changing your current situation isn't possible, fully accept it by dropping all inner resistance, a state known as surrender. Surrender is not a sign of weakness, it embodies great strength and leads to internal freedom. Even if your choice is inactivity, laziness, or passivity, accept it completely. Are you stressed? Stress arises from being, here, but wanting to be, there. Engage fully in whatever you are doing, whether it's moving, working, running, or sitting on a park bench. Observe your mind's commentary, and smile at it. Is your attention often consumed by the past? Do you frequently talk or think about it, whether positively or negatively? Whether it's achievements, adventures, victim stories, or regrets, dwelling on the past reinforces a false sense of self and accelerates aging. Observe those around you who cling to the past. Let go of the past in each moment, only refer to it when absolutely relevant to the present. Feeling worried? Are, what if, thoughts dominating your mind? This indicates an identification with your thoughts, projecting into an imaginary future that generates fear. However, you can break free from this corrosive cycle by acknowledging the present moment. Focus on your breathing, feel the air flowing in and out, and sense your inner energy field. The only thing you truly deal with in real life, as opposed to mental projections, is this very moment. Ask yourself, what problem, do I have right now, not in the future? The now is manageable, the future, being a mental phantom, is not. You can always cope with the present, but the future is beyond your control and doesn't require coping. If your mindset is, one day I'll make it, be cautious. Waiting to start living creates a pattern where, no matter what you achieve, the present will never feel sufficient, and the future will always appear more appealing. Are you a habitual, waiter? How much of your life is spent waiting? There's what I call, small-scale waiting, waiting in line, in traffic, at the airport, or for someone or something to finish. Then there's, large-scale waiting, waiting for the next vacation, a better job, kids to grow up, a meaningful relationship, success, money, importance, or enlightenment. This small-scale waiting is unavoidable, but large-scale waiting is dangerous. It is a state of mind, a discontent with what you have and a desire for what you don't. Setting goals and working towards achievements is fine, but the mistake is using it as a substitute for truly experiencing life, for being present.
So, the next time someone apologizes for keeping you for that, small scale waiting, respond with, that's alright, I wasn't waiting. I was simply standing here, immersing myself in the joy of the present moment. The false, unhappy self, anchored in the identification with the mind, finds comfort in the familiarity of time. It views the present moment as a threat and employs various tactics to keep you ensnared in the confines of time. The purpose of your life's journey comprises both outer and inner dimensions. The outer purpose involves reaching your goals, accomplishing tasks, and achieving what you've set out to do, essentially, the tangible outcomes of your journey. However, it's crucial to remember that the only thing genuinely real about your journey is the step you are taking at this very moment. While the outer purpose is tied to the future and the destination, the inner purpose is focused on the present and the quality of your consciousness in each moment. If your attention becomes overly fixated on the future steps or destination, you risk missing the inner purpose, which is about how you approach and experience each step. This inner purpose transcends the where and what, emphasizing the transformative power of being fully present. When you prioritize the quality of your consciousness in the current step, it can turn into an expression of perfection, an act of great beauty and significance, ultimately leading you into a state of being. Whether we succeed or fail in the external world matters until we realize our inner purpose. Once that inner purpose is recognized, the external realm becomes a game, and you may choose to engage in it simply for enjoyment. It's entirely possible to fail in your outer pursuits and still succeed profoundly in your inner journey. Conversely, it's also common to achieve external success while experiencing inner poverty, as expressed in the saying, gain the world and lose your soul. Recognizing that lasting fulfillment cannot be found in external achievements is a crucial realization. Redirecting attention to the present moment, observing behaviors, reactions, moods, thoughts, emotions, fears, and desires without judgment or analysis helps dissolve the past. By being fully present, you engage with the power of your presence to address and transcend the influence of the past.